Hello everyone, welcome to find my Facebook ID channel. In today's video, we will be talking through some Linux commands that you can use if you're just getting started or to increase your productivity. In the last video, we discussed about using Ubuntu based operating system if you're on Mac OS or Windows based system. If you would like to watch that video, you can always click the link above. So let's just get started. <music> As you can see, we're using the Ubuntu terminal here. The very first command we're gonna talk about is change directory, which can be used to go to any directory you would like to. So as you can see, cd till command takes you to the home directory. So let's say if I just want to go back to the previous directory I was in, I can always do cd hyphen, which takes me to the previous directory I was in. This command is super useful if you just want to save your time avoiding typing the whole path you want to go into. So instead of typing where www and then going back to temp, I can always just type cd hyphen which takes me to where www pretty quick. The next command we are talking about here is the reverse search. The reverse search is really helpful if you want to go through any command you have typed in your history. And so let's say I type apt install. This basically shows me apt install kit which was typed previously. So if I just want to go through all the possible matches, I can always type control R and it takes me through the matches matching the reverse search. Again, it's a case insensit insensitive search. So it will match whatever keyword you type. So let's say if I just remember any part of the command, I can just type it in and then I can just scroll through the options. The next one command we are talking about here is apt install kit. Now, as you can see, I just forgot sudo here. So if you just want to repeat your last command, you can use sudo double exclamation sign to just get back to your previous command, which basically replaces these exclamation sign with your actual command you typed previously. The next shortcut we are talking about here is history command. Within this history command, so you can always refer to any history command number and then you can directly execute that command by using the exclamation sign and the command number. So let's say you want to use the command number 186. I can just type 186 and it will automatically execute that. That's again super helpful if you just want to repeat any command you have typed in the past. The next one command we are talking about is again the history command. So let's say I type and see the history. As you can see, the history shows me the count of the command and the actual command. Now let's see if you would like to also have the date the command was entered. You can always do that by using his time format variable and then typing the date format, which is percent %y, percent %m, percent %d and percent %t. The space here is required if you want to make sure that it's readable so your command and the created time can be separated by space. So as soon as I enter that and type the history command again, I can see that I have the, the time as well and the date as well along with the command which is again super helpful if you just want to go through your previous command typed on a particular timestamp. Now the thing is this particular variable is just set for this session but if you would like to keep it for your next sessions or for another terminal you would like to put it inside your base archive file which is the file which keeps all the best configuration. So as you can see in this configuration if you just start seeing the number here so let me just set the number. In line number 13 it says hist control ignore both which basically means that if you start putting space just before your command it will be ignored from your history data. So it's really helpful if you just want to avoid any command from showing in history. Let's say if you're typing any sensitive data if the command includes anything which is sensitive and should not be shown to the uh, other members logging into your servers you can always use that feature. And we have some other variables that we have used in 19 and 20 which shows the file size and other stuff. So you can always set this as time format here and it will automatically start showing you the time created for every command that you're using. The next one is an another shortcut that we're talking about here that control L which can be used to clear a screen. Again super helpful if you just don't want to type C L E L clear. Save few seconds. The next one command we're going to talk about is using multiple commands in a single line which really helps which is really helpful if you just want to save your time typing them one by one. So let's say I just want to go to the temp directory and then I want to echo hello. So as you can see, I, I just typed cd temp which takes me to temp directory and then I type and then I echoed hello which works fine. 
Now there's another alternate which is basically replacing this double ampersand with semicolon which works as well. But let's see the difference between those two. So let's demonstrate the difference. So let's say I type this command a wrong one, any kind of mistake. So I'm just, you know, renaming temp with tm which is basically wrong. There's no directory with the name tm. So as soon as I enter it says no such file or directory. So if your first command fails, it won't execute your second command. But let's say if we are doing the same thing with semicolon no matter your first command fails or succeeds it's going to always execute the second command so that's the difference between using ampersand and semicolon again really helpful if you are deploying something or if you are writing a shell command uh, into a single line the next one command we're going to talk about is tail commands tail command is again very helpful if you want to check your log file the recent log and it helps you to find out any recent error that may has came up in your log files so let's just see what's in our system log right now so as you can see uh, i just opened tel f where log syslog which gives me the latest system log from my ubuntu computer again it's really helpful for checking your log files the next one command is truncate command so Truncate command is helpful if you want to like um, remove a particular content from the file or reduce the size of the file. So let's say your computer disk space is full and you would like to remove all those log files which are really big in size. So you can always do that by using the S flag and then specify the file name. So let's just go to home directory and let's just create a file called hello.txt and now we can just open the hello.txt file. Now we use truncate command we can always you know make this a zero based file so if you now see the hello.txt has nothing inside it now again it's really important to use this command with precaution because it's gonna delete all the content within your file so as you can see here again the hello.txt the, the size of the file is as you can see, so the truncate can basically be used to empty the file or reduce the size file. So let's let's talk through the next command now. So let's say now you are dealing with any command which produces a lot of output and it's not very well readable. So one of these examples is mount command, which echoes out a lot of things, whatever file system are mounted on your system. In this case, you can always make this readable by using the pipe command, which is again helpful if you would like to, you know, format your output more better and more readable way. Another example could be, let's say you're looking at your system log and you would like to find something within your system log. So you can use this. So as you can see here, we're using the tell command, which basically echoes out the last few lines from your system logs. And then we're using grab command to grab a pattern from your logs which is again super helpful if you would like find a pattern from your logs or see whether a particular API request failed or succeeded. So as you can see, we have a list of files that contain system within it and it's really helpful to find a pattern within a particular file. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up. If you're watching for the first time, make sure you subscribe. And if you'd like to see more video, do let us know in the comment section. If you if would like to see more com more commands from Linux and Ubuntu based uh, system or if you would like to cover any other topic, do let us know in the comment section and we'll be more than happy to do it for you. Thank you so much for watching. See you again. Bye.